50 years ago, something unfortunate happened. Depending on your point of view, the cubicle was introduced to the American office. Mo Rocca is here to celebrate the highs and the lows of every cubicle dweller's office space. Mo, good morning. <laughs> good morning, Gail. <laughs> According to statistics, 60% of Americans work in a three-walled cubicle like this one. Shockingly, 93% of them report hating it. So we thought we'd toast and roast the office space everyone loves to hate, the cubicle. Human beings were not meant to sit in little cubicles staring at computer screens all day. Despite being universally despised by fictional and real life office workers everywhere, 50 years later, the dreaded cubicle is still very much with us. A group of cubicles collectively is called a cube farm. Nikhil Saval is the author of Cubed, The Secret History of the Workplace. What's so bad about this space? Well, it's not so bad necessarily. I mean, it's your own space, it's private. But part of the problem is that it's not totally private and it's not, it doesn't really block out noise. And it sort right, of feels- I can, hear, I can hear the woman right over there. She's on the phone. Could you turn that down just a little bit? But I, I was told that I could listen to the radio at a reasonable volume. Noisy, claustrophobic, soul-sucking. Just some of the terms of endearment assigned to the old office cubicle. But boxed in nine to fivers may not realize how good they have it. So what was wrong with the arrangement pre-cubicle? It was just too open. You had no way of privatizing your space. I mean, there was just, there was no privacy if you were in the center. So a half century ago, a designer for Herman Miller named Robert Probst set out to humanize workspaces with the Action Office. Now what exactly is Action Office? Well, I'm walking through it right now. The idea was to give workers their own space. The walls were meant to be movable to suit the needs of the individual. All this in one office? Why not all this in one office? But businesses took one look at Probst's innovative design and realized they could lock it into an immovable and brutally efficient box-like shape, the cubicle. Unfortunately, the cubicle started getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Is that Smith with a Y or an I? Soon skyscrapers were stacked with floor upon floor upon floor of cubicles. A part of everyday life with its own lingo, a single cube lovingly referred to as a veal fattening pan. And what I'm doing right now, this is called prairie dogging. Very funny, Alan. The cubicle became the repository of pop culture vitriol. You need to stop banging your pen on your desk or it's gonna drive me insane. Okay, got it. Its biggest starring role may be in the classic cartoon strip, Dilbert. I canceled your project so I can use the budget to remodel my office. Scott Adams is Dilbert's creator. Yay life. I worked in a corporate environment for about 16 years. Most of that was in a cubicle and that influenced the development of Dilbert because the cubicle world was so bleak and depressing. It was just a perfect environment for a humorous uh, situation. Today, Scott works at home, and no, he doesn't have a cubicle at home. What is this called? This is an open plan office. I mean, we took Nikhil to our CBS This Morning offices, an open newsroom that's always buzzing. I totally hear this guy's conversation. A lot of businesses are moving towards the open plan office. Tech companies like Google made communal workspaces hip. Next year, Facebook plans to move into one huge open office, the largest in the world. At some point, employees everywhere said, Mr. Office Manager, tear down these cubicle walls. Yeah, more like Mr. Office Manager said, this is probably a good idea. We should, we should have people together. They should be collaborating. There's people serendipitously encounter each other. Serendipitous encounter, I'm sorry, just sounds like like nine months later, there'll be a baby. <laughs> but this is no laughing matter. Office productivity and happiness are on the line. Ironically, this was the arrangement from before the cubicle. Yeah, the cubicle was meant to save people from setups like this, in fact, where you had desk after desk and noise and visual distractions of all kind. And now we're back to it. So maybe one day we'll all look back with nostalgia for our three-walled cubicles. Get me out of here. Hell, who am I kidding?
<laughs> so Robert Probst, the man who designed the cubicle, yeah. really regretted it. He ended up calling the cubicle barren, a barren rat hole place and monolithic insanity. I mean, he didn't intend for this to turn out this way. Yeah, when you say the cubicle, it sounds so sinister. So where is this trending? Yeah. Uh, it's trending towards communal spaces, towards these open spaces. Mm -hmm. uh, Do employees like that, though? Mo. What's that? Do employees like open spaces? You know, I don't think I don't think they do because you have even either. less privacy. At least you can sort of hide in your cubicle, right? Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Good for business, Mo. Thank you. Of course, thank Thanks. you. All right, you're watching CBS this morning. <laughs>